Did you notice that in the Despicable Me 4 trailer, one of the main characters from one of Illumination's earlier films, The Lorax, makes an appearance? Or did you realize that there's a direct reference to one of the most famous castles in one of the world's biggest theme park complexes? We've gathered 25 absolutely amazing details and Easter eggs that we found in the trailer for Gru and his family's fourth film. To discover all of them with us, just stay tuned until the end of the video. Undoubtedly, the biggest and best surprise in the trailer was the revelation of Gru Jr.'s birth. Seriously, I love that name. <laughs> And about this, we noticed some cool details regarding this new character in the franchise. For example, the little baby wears, just like his father, one of the items that reminds us the most of Gru, the gray scarf with black stripes. But not only that, little Gru Jr. looks a lot like the baby version we know from Gru and Drew in the last Despicable Me film. We can see that all the characteristics are there, the pointed nose and the small lock of hair curled on the head, but with a small difference. The hair color, which is just like Lucy's, his mother, who is a redhead. One thing we can notice is that after adopting the girls, Gru improved the decoration of his house, which used to look like a dungeon on the inside. This certainly improved even more with Lucy entering the villain's life. But a decoration detail that was present in the first film can be seen again in the trailer for the fourth film. In the new trailer, we notice a framed flower painting. But if you look closely, you'll see that it's not an ordinary flower, but rather a symbol of radioactivity in a villainous style. This is exactly the same flower that was there the first time the girls entered and saw their new home in the first film. This continuity of the story and these details are incredible. When Gru comes home to see his beautiful and wonderful family, he's coming back from shopping. And if you look on top of the shopping table, you'll notice some bottles of drinks and other things like chips. But before you think that Gru might be stuffing his daughters and his little baby with junk, if you look closely, you'll see that everything he bought was from an organic grocery store. Well done, Gru. Organic food is much healthier. In the same scene, if we look in the background in the cabinet behind the girls, we'll notice something really cool. There's a miniature of a minion that looks a lot like Stuart. And next to the little minion toy, we also notice something cool that seems to be a small gumball machine. But instead of colorful gumballs, it seems to have gumballs that look like human eyes. Or could they be minion eyes? It's the spirit of villainy still in Gru's house. After all, he's still a villain, but a good one, isn't he? Furthermore, right below the minion toy, we can see that there are four cereal bowls. From right to left, the first one has a unicorn shape, and it's definitely Agnes's. Next to her is a green one, which I would say is Margot's, a red one that must be Edith's, and a black one that certainly matches Gru Jr. This was the first hint in the trailer that Gru Jr. would appear. Another super cool detail is the mug that Lucy is holding. We can see that it has a phrase on it that says, best mom ever. She must have been very happy when she received that mug from the girls. And will also be very happy after you click down below on the subscribe button and join our team. Another hint we saw in the trailer was the name of Gru and Lucy's little son. If you look closely, you'll see that on the back support that Lucy uses to carry her baby, there's the letter G on it. This was already an indication that his name would start with the letter G, which in this case is Gru but with Junior, a beautiful tribute to the big dad. In the next part of the trailer, we see a green van parked, and we notice that its license plate is 7WLM882. As we know that nothing in animated films is by chance, we've come up with an interpretation for this license plate numbering that makes sense to us. Seven, a reference to the year Illumination was founded, which was 2007. W, a reference to the universal symbol, a globe, the distributor of the company's films. L, in reference to Los Angeles, where the company's headquarters are located. And M, as a tribute to the last name of Illumination's creator, Chris Melodandry. We haven't deciphered the other numbers yet, but if you have any theories, please share them in the comments. We'd love to know! Returning to the van, it appears very briefly, but if we pause the scene, we can see that it's a pest control vehicle, as indicated by the vehicle's paintings. And there's even a symbol of a cockroach, which leads us to the next amazing detail in the trailer. In the following scene, we notice that a sort of giant robot bursts out of the ground, making the pest control van fly. Interestingly, right after that, we can see that the giant robot actually has the shape of a cockroach. So this was definitely intentional, as pest control was practically exterminated by a giant cockroach. Get the irony? We notice something very interesting about this same scene. Note that the villain behind Gru in the film is wearing green and yellow colored clothes. These are exactly the same colors as the pest control van that was destroyed by him a little earlier. This is definitely irony number two. 
Continuing with the super amazing details in the trailer, we notice what seems to be a subtle taunt to its biggest competitor at the moment. Look at this scene and tell me if this castle doesn't look a lot like Disney's castle. It seems like someone wants to take DreamWorks' place in teasing Disney, don't you think? Seriously, I love these jabs between animation companies. And you? Even though the castle looks quite similar to Disney's on the outside, on the inside, it closely resembles another iconic castle from the world of movies. When we see Gru invading the place, we can see that it actually looks a lot like Hogwarts, Harry Potter's School of Magic. Even the colors of the symbols inside the castle closely resemble Gryffindor's colors, the house to which almost the entire Potter family belongs. But it seems to be a Hogwarts for villains, as we can see that the institution's emblem embroidered on the banners is that of a torpedo. Or is it a missile? Perhaps these references are because Universal Park has several Harry Potter attractions. Furthermore, we can see that the school's emblem is also made up of very villainous items. The old radiation symbol, dynamite, a bomb, and a knife. These are truly symbols of old school villains. <laughs> By the way, if you also enjoy a good film in the Despicable Me style, comment below with hashtag villain. Returning to the details, besides the colors and style reminiscent of Hogwarts, inside the castle we also notice very interesting details that reminds us of the famous young wizard school. We can see a statue of a golden dragon, as well as suits of armor and swords, all scattered throughout the place. And to give an even more sinister look to what really seems to be a school for criminals, we see items full of sharp things that look more like torture devices. Furthermore, we also see a bomb, one of those classic ones from cartoons. It truly has the appearance of a crime school. What further confirms this assertion is a sign on top of the table that reads Principal Überschlet. Besides the sign, we see a statue in the corner of the table that looks just like the old lady who wakes up afterward. So, we are certain that this room indeed belongs to her. We also notice other very interesting things in the principal's office of the School of Crime. We see Gru grabbing an injection, and above it there's a warning about a honey badger, which must be the school's mascot. And in the background, we can see another golden statue, but this time of a honey badger. Another sensational detail we notice relates to one of the paintings in the principal's office. In it, there's a man wearing a green hat. We can't say for sure, but he strongly resembles the villain from the Lorax movie, the Onceler, don't you think? So the question is, is the Onceler a student or a teacher at the school? Another funny thing is that it seems Principal Ubelschleit sleeps in a coffin. This woman really looks extremely villainous. We also notice that the school's acronym, LPB, is everywhere, like on the banners hanging from the ceiling. We even found the same acronym on the scooters of the old lady's companions, the cruel principal of the school of crime. Finally, you surely also noticed a new character in the film, the red-haired girl. We're not exactly sure who she is yet, but we're sure she has the Gru family's nose. This may indicate that we'll get to know more about Gru's family and Despicable Me 4. I would love to see that. These were the 25 incredible details and Easter eggs we found and shared with you in the Despicable Me 4 trailer. Seeing Gru, the girls, and the minions is always a lot of fun and cool. We've picked out some other video options for you to watch and continue having fun with us for a bit longer. Just choose and click. Thanks and enjoy.